Welcome back YouTube. Today we're going to review the Ruger Silencer ISB. Now I've already done some reviews for them. Uh, we reviewed, as you know, the Ruger Precision Rifle and 6.5 Creedmoor and 308. That video really took off. And then their muzzle mountable can when they took the world by storm and Ruger announced that they were coming out with their first silencer. Uh, so we did a review on that. Really, really neat can. This shares a lot of the same features. But man, this thing really stands out. Sometimes it's a curse being on this side of the table. I get advanced knowledge a lot of times on things that are going to be coming to the pipeline. Been waiting for this one for quite some time. So I am just as excited as you to go ahead and break this thing down. Let's get to it. For those of you at home that have not figured it out yet, ISB stands for Integrally Suppressed Barrel. So Ruger saw a need for adding a Integrally Suppressed section for the 1022 takedown platform that they already sell. So basically you can buy this rifle um, already with a 16 and, 16 and a half inch fluted bull barrel with half by 28 threads on the end. You can buy that, play with it for a while, throw a can on it while you wait for your tax stamp for this to come back. Um, really neat setup. I'm glad they did it. The lockup, everything here is exactly the same. Nothing's changed. I mean, they even made the forend match. Everything here matches as you, as the gun comes out of the box with the other barrel, but everything here is different. Okay, we're going to cover that more in just a second. Let's go ahead and get down to the specs. Okay, the overall length on the ISB itself is 16.12 inches, an effective barrel length of 10.62 inches and a weight of 2.6 pounds. Now let's compare that to the factory setup. So with their suppressor on it, the silencer that I already reviewed, mounted to the half by 28 threads on the fluted bull barrel. So this is what would normally come on this rifle. You have an overall length from end to end of 21.25 inches with a weight of 3.2 pounds including the suppressor versus uh, 2.6 pounds, including obviously the suppressor. Uh, the only pros I would say on this one is that you have six more inches of barrel use, but I mean, if we're shooting standard velocity ammo here, guys, uh, the six inches here versus the 10 inch barrel, not a big deal. And of course, with this one, you also have the option to mount different suppressors. However, you are gonna have more weight and more length. Um, speaking of the ammo, this meters at 113 decibels, very quiet. Uh, the bolt shutting on an AR-15 on a loaded magazine, loading around to the chamber is 112. So keep that in mind, very quiet. Uh, continuing in the specs, the outer surface of the barrel is coated in a really nicely done uh, matte black Cerakote and the barrel itself is stainless. The baffles are a cast stainless steel. We'll get to that in a second. And this front section of the barrel is actually an aluminum sleeve. That's part of the uh, reason why it's not so front heavy and they kept the weight down in the front. Uh, so with all the specs out of the way, let's go ahead, take a look at the inside and see what makes this thing tick. Okay, the ISB ships with a manual and a takedown tool, AKA Allen wrench. Uh, so let's go ahead and, you know, full disclosure here, I have never taken apart. I literally, this just came in like two days ago. I'm filming today. have not taken it apart yet other than um, at the NRA show. They did it for me when I saw it there. So you guys be doing it here with me. First time. Love that. And uh, if I remember, you just remove the sound key. Now, usually when I get cans in for review, guys, uh, I don't shoot them. I like to film the footage before I shoot it. That way the baffles are all nice and clean on screen. I gave in a little bit on this one. I only shot like 20 rounds, but I had to do it. I did a yard pop and man, it sounded good. All right, well that's easy. That just came right out. You can definitely uh, fit some tools in here if you had to clean it, like a brush actually, like a 45 caliber brush maybe. Clean that out easy. If you get leakage, you shouldn't. Uh, yeah, so that's basically all it is. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of their push cone baffles. 
And it looks like you can remove this rod here. The front cap comes off. That's it. They just unsnap. Very cool. Again, I shot about 20 rounds or so through this, so there's not much buildup, but they're certainly not brand new anymore. That's it. They're all there is to it. Now, for uh, th those of you that are new to suppressors out there, uh, the, one of the biggest benefits of this type of construction is the fact that you have large open voids here. So you don't have a lot of nooks and crannies like you would get in a smaller um, K baffle uh, on their push cone. A lot of open space and it's stainless steel. So you get a little 50-50 solution of water and purple power or something. Drop these in your ultrasonic cleaner for a couple cycles and boxes and boxes of buildup from shooting um, your suppressed 22 will just slough right off the baffle clean it up and you'll be back to new again. So thank God they went with stainless steel on this. And you know, Ruger's pretty much one of the only companies out there that can handle uh, the casting. They're very, very experienced with cast metals. So I'm glad they chose to go the cast route on these. You can do a lot of complex parts versus if you had to use a CNC machine to cut everything. It would be way more expensive and the price of this would go way higher and these work just fine. So once you have all your baffles clean and ready to go, you can reassemble and these should snap right back together again. So you have the rear piece. This has the uh, muzzle hole, I guess you could say, and the threaded portion. That's what this rod is going to engage with and pull the stack together when you're done and also secure it to the um, section in the actual barrel. So you should just be able to snap these together. This should only go one way. Let's see. Yep, they do only go one way. So I'll just put them back in the order that we took it apart in. This is super simple. And uh, man, I hate cleaning cans, so this is gonna make it really easy. Okay, and then we should just slide this through. Bada bing. Oh the muzzle hole. Wrong one. I should have looked. Yep, and you'll feel it engage the threads on the last baffle in the stack. So again, some of you that are unfamiliar with this actual baffle design, this is their push cone baffle. Uh, this is a cast part, so it looks very different than the machine baffles you guys are used to seeing. So again, it's a push cone. So picture like a flat piece of metal and you're pushing your hand through it like a like a molten piece of metal and you're pushing your hand through it and forming it. Okay, so that's kind of how it got that push cone name. Um, but it works and it works really well. Remember 113 decibels average on this with standard ammunition. So that's really hard to achieve, especially your first hit right out of the gate. Um, so if you remember the regular silencer that they came out with, the muzzle can that I showed you earlier and the length comparison, uh, that's basically just a single version of this. So they basically just stacked it. So there's two right on top of each other, brought in the uh, profile just a little bit, and that's what they use to secure the stack together. So you have, looks like almost double the volume that you would in the muzzle can in this. So um, that's probably why the other day when I shot at my backyard, I did not experience any none zilch first round pop, none at all. And the ejection port noise, very minimal. You literally only hear the bolt. There is no snapping or popping coming out of the bolt, which means this is a very low pressure design here. Uh, so we can probably thank that extra volume from stacking the baffles in that mold type they did with this very over under-ish shotgun look here, which has really grown on me since it came out. Now I should probably read the manual at how tight I should do this. I'm not sure there's an actual torque value because it only ships with this Allen key, but uh, we'll just get it nice and snug. That's good enough. And we are good to go. Okay, by now many of you have a pretty good idea of how this works, all the specs. Let's go ahead and hit that range. Uh, we're gonna do the profile view microphone, microphone at muzzle, and down range to give you guys an idea of different locations and what it sounds like. Now, today, something came in, and my more astute 
subscribers have already noticed it. I've been sneak peeking it the whole video today. So Freedom Munitions just came out with their own line of Hush 22 ammo. It's the first time they've uh, sold 22 ammo. Uh, so pretty cool. Um, I've been waiting for this for quite some time. They literally airmailed me a couple samples uh, last night, came overnight for this review. Um, so we're gonna put it to the test right here shortly. Um, now it should be on their website already. They told me about a week so if it's not up right now while you're watching this video, just keep checking back. You're going to be looking for the Hush 22. Um, and make sure to use my promo code NFA review to save on that purchase. Let's go ahead and get to it. Well, everybody, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed today's review. Um, this thing performed exactly as I thought it would. Um, huge difference when I had the original front end on there when we were shooting the unsuppressed versus the suppressed. Something I noticed during filming is the report and echo of the bullet slamming into the berm downrange kind of drowned out everything. So go ahead and take a look at this clip real quick where I shoot it really close to give you an idea of just how quiet this thing is. Told you, magically quiet, like CO2 air gun. Actually, I shot this next to a CO2 air gun to see what it sounded like. I should have recorded it. This was actually quieter. So let that sink in a little bit. Uh, so huge, huge home run by Ruger. Uh, still crazy day and age that Ruger has not one, but two suppressors. So I'm, I'm actually curious to see what they come up with later on down the road. Hopefully something a little larger. So non rim fire, you know, that'd be pretty uh, neat. Uh, huge shout out to Freedom Munitions for their new Hush 22 ammo. Awesome, performed exactly as advertised. If you wanna buy your own, use promo code NFA review at Freedom Munitions website to pick up any ammo, I believe it's uh, five to 10% off. So saves you a couple bucks. And like always, make sure to click that like and subscribe button, guys. A lot more reviews coming. See you next time.